what are the kind of things that your school have done to help be more inclusive for you and your needs? They haven't actually done much. It's been me and my and the Highlands Blind Support Group that has done it all. But ah, yeah, me and the support group have come up with an idea that we, well, at first we tried having people wearing high vis vests like builders, but people didn't want to do it because they, they thought they stuck it like a sore thumb. But then a friend was saying they wish uh, hoodies a part of the uniform like they are at the academy and then then we I went away with that and we decided that we'd make get highlighter hoodies and emblazon them with the badges and things for the group and the hashtag I inspire or EYE inspire that we had come up with at the name of the group and people wear them around the playground so we can discern them from the typical purple of the school uniform. Oh, brilliant. So they wear the hoodies specifically at break time. Yes, break time and lunch. Well, they did. They don't anymore, but they did wear them at break time and lunch time. Uh, so has it changed? Do you feel like you don't need it so much now, Erica? Or no, I, I still it? need it just as much. But at the end of P7, you get your Levers hoodies and they have all different colours. For example, I've got a burgundy one on and you can have... So people don't want to wear the hoodies because since we were three and we started nursery and saw the big P7s walking past in their Levers hoodies, everyone has wanted to wear a Levers hoodie. So it, it would be a bit cruel to force my friends to wear a highlighter hoodie when they just want to wear their Levers hoodies. Mm, and you've only got, I suppose, a few weeks left of term because you'll finish in June, I guess. Probably. Yes. No, yeah. not exactly. First of July. 1st of July okay but it's a great idea so it's break and lunchtime people wore specific coloured hoodies so you could find them and um you knew who was there as a kind of like somebody who could answer your questions or be a port of call yeah and they didn't have to play with me they just they were just people that were happy to be basic to be asked can you help me find and then whoever I was after it's amazing Cool. And it, this came together because you researched, like you brainstormed the idea with a group of other people with VI? Um, not a group. There's only actually one other person with VI that's under the age of 30. That's, that's as high as the group runs that live in Highland. Yeah. So it's you and this other person were well done for being creative with this other person. That's amazing. And when you were dealing with your now and even before when your eyesight was changing, Erica, what messages did you want your school to hear about how to include you? I just felt like I, I just I don't know, really just felt like I really wanted to be part of the school and the school had before come up with ideas that involved me not really being part of my year group. So actually your school was kind of thinking about your needs as a separate thing and not as part of you as a student, as part of the whole school. Yeah, they were thinking of mm. everyone's needs and Erica's needs. They weren't thinking of everyone's needs, including every single member of the school. That's a massive message. And I think that's one that we should really highlight during university week because that's, that's a big message for schools to hear. Think about all your students and not just the usual needs, but everybody's needs. That's amazing. Like, what about how have you been able to discuss how you feel with your friends in your school? I found it really hard because actually most of them think, well, almost everyone still thinks that um, my vision's going to get better. Like I was chatting to people and they were saying, yeah, like last summer, I was around as a friend and they were saying, yeah, we won't have to wear the highlight hoodies by the time the Libra's hoodies come out, though, because you'll have stopped chemotherapy and your vision will have got better. But it won't. So if a building burns down, you don't put out the flames and then the building springs back up. It's just lost. And people don't seem to get that it's lost and it's not coming back. Yeah, I can totally understand that. That's really well put, Erica, and it's a really emotional subject. Have you already started some transition sessions with the high school where you're going to go? 
Not so much with the learning, that's up to my QTBI, but I have been going and doing some transition visits, well, trying to. Have you got an idea of who would be the support options there at the school? Or are you, It's hard to know, isn't it, because it's, it's looking ahead till August. Yeah, um, I, I do know largely, but quite a few of the support team aren't the best. I've met them and they haven't adapted very well, and mm. yeah. For example, it's, uh, so if you look over there, you go, I know, Eric, I know you've got bad vision. So guess what we've done? Instead of saying you go to the tree, we've stuck squares that are two inches by two inches, and it, they're going to correspond with the colour of your house. So if you just go over to that square, then you should be able to find it. And it felt like, excuse me, I'm blind. How am I meant to find a two inch by two inch square? So they've got a lot of learning to do themselves, haven't they? Yes, about that blind means blind. It doesn't mean can't see a tree, but can see a two inch by two inch square. And that is massive. Do you feel confident to tell people what, like, about your needs? Or does that, is that really hard? Do you want other people to do more taking that on for you? Like, you're still so young, Erica. It depends who it is. Like I barely, no, I barely knew the teachers, but I mean, they knew they've had blind people, they've had a blind person in the academy before, not as severe as me, but they should know how to adapt. It just felt like they weren't adapting. If it's someone I know, like my parents, I'm happy to say, Mum, where's over there? But mm. but with other people, and they don't, then they feel slightly more uncomfortable. Yeah, I can totally understand that. I think it's, it's given me an idea of like more things we could do with Look Mentors and think about resources for the future. It'd be lovely to have like a really kind of user-friendly, accessible and fun kind of demo on video of like maybe a mentor doing a tour of a school and highlighting useful language or useful ways for them to access this brand new building and something that we could share with teachers and TAs. Yeah, like right. a mentor taking a mentee that's never been in the building before and showing and demonstrating how yeah. how best, and not to use the words there, but to say, yes. for example, over to your right at three o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Do you like that? A lot of people like kind of clock face. I know it's, it's probably easier to understand with people that have seen in the past, but maybe like with a, with a dinner on the plate that can be a really helpful reference point yeah. if, if your family do that like your roast potatoes are at six o'clock or yeah then... they, they refer to everything because I'm not I'm not a picky eater but I still don't like it if I'm thinking I'm taking a spoonful of broccoli but I take I don't know but take some cabbage instead I like cabbage but I don't like cabbage if it's a surprise I can totally understand that. It, because a sighted person can choose what they're putting in their mouth just by glancing at the plate, you want to still have that autonomy, don't you? Yeah, and with my with my current with my support group in Highlands, we're going to try and get into the school. Well, and we've been planning it for a while, and we're going to have things like they're going to wear their basically glasses, but they render your vision to different severities. Like one is retinous pigmentosis. And you also get another for complete blindness, another for peripheral mm. vision, another for tunnel, another for only light perception and so on. And we're going to give people, just with the fully black glasses, they're going to have a plate. It doesn't actually matter what colour. Then they're going to think, we're going to have things that feel similar under the fork. Appreciating allergies, we might get chocolate and fluffed up in a fancy shape. Or something, and then we'd have then we'd have that, and say a sprout, and different things like that. Typical oh. things that most people like, and then things that most of my year group, except for me, absolutely hate, like sprouts <laughs> and cabbage. And then pe- then we'd then we'd say to pe- we wouldn't tell them everything on the plate. We'd say this is all nice food, enjoy. And then we intended to watch everyone's faces as they ate what they thought was chocolate, but it's, it's actually sprouts and cabbage. Oh, that's brilliant. So how it feels to not know where your fork is going. To and help. to eat something that is actually nothing what, like what you expected. 
That is amazing. And also it, it really demonstrates the kind of the lack of control that a VIP might have day to day. Like if especially if you're having to do things from a really tactile, you know, you're having to put your hands on lots of things. You want to feel confident you're not going to put your hand in something hot or that kind of the risk taking that a VIP has to take every day. It's, it's hard to fathom. When you- yeah, I used to get marked a bit at school, but just like with glances that my friends describe to me and things like, she's disgusting, when partly because my food, partly because they like strange things, as most of my year group think, to, in my lunch boxes, but partly because I used to perform and my dad's going to tell me what they'd put in and if they'd put something in. I used to not know what it was. We used to touch it and sniff it to know mm. what she's putting in my mouth and I used to think Ugh, why is she sniffing her food that's disgusting yeah well you feel like other people in your year to learn how you do things and how you get around and how you find your things I think that's a really important thing for schools to do but yes. help other students yeah. learn more about you and how you access the world Oh, that's amazing. Erica, you're coming up with some fantastic ideas of things you can do with this, your school where you're at and the school where you're going. Good luck. Sounds amazing. I want to be in the, up in the Highlands and come and help with the Sim specs. Sounds fantastic. Yeah, that's what they call I was trying to remember the name. It's Sim specs, of course. Yeah, Sim specs. Yeah, they are, they're very, actually, we use them quite a lot at work. They really they really help take people to to those different experiences really really well like nothing else it's great and then PE because of course I'm limited with my leg and things because mm. of its badness at the minute and mm. people and I used to not be able to do an PE and the PE teacher came up with the idea that one week I designed an obstacle course and everyone had to do it I brought in blindfolds and one person wore a blindfold while someone else did it and they were really simple things, like have a have a skipping rope, only about a metre long, but twist it into the shape of the figure eight. And nobody could do it. Mm. But the, you just need to get it, cross it over in the first part of a loop knot and pull the ends together. And there were just things like that. And people had to do it tactilely and try and weave in and out of cones. And, and then the last couple of weeks, we've been doing gold ball and it's been quite nice. Oh, cool. So how, is your, how have your teachers learned how to do goal pool? Have they, they had some, you're teaching them. Well, basically, I said, I, the PE teacher do, can do some sports friendly too. What about goal ball? Yeah, what do you need? I need mats, please. I'll bring the audible ball. I'll bring in the blindfold. So she turned up with six gym mats. And then we did goal ball and I brought in my ball and I brought in the blindfolds. And yeah, the teacher was just saying like, so that's how you play it. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's amazing, Erica. Well done. Do you get to play it much? I did have a meeting with my blind support group from a, a proper one at Dingwall Academy, and we invited people along and we put it out for the public, and we had a fair amount of people turn up, and it was on MFR and other things, and we got Pete, and then we did some gold ball then. And, yeah... Cool, been... that's brilliant. You're really innovative, Erica. I think that's fantastic. What did your friends think of Gold Ball? They would like it because they'd done it at the set session they did with my blind support group. And yeah, I'm quite a lot with other people were delighted as well. One of the boys always gets yelled at because he's a reactive and he likes to roll about in the floor a lot. But in a gold ball, he didn't get shouted at and told to stop mucking about. He got he got told, well done, Rory. Thanks for rolling on the floor. You're doing really well. Yeah, that's that's where you need to be in gold ball, down low. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. This is really helpful, Erica. Thank you so much.